reduction of a reducible representation. Uh, the characters of an irreducible representation are called simple or primitive characters. And the characters of a reducible representation are called compound characters. Suppose uh, we have a reducible representation uh, denoted by gamma of a finite group G. Then the character of any element of the group, say the element GI, the character of any element GI of the group in this representation can always return as a weighted sum of the characters of the element in uh, various irreducible representations of that element. So it could be written as when you consider the alpha irreducible representation and the corresponding element, corresponding character, character of the element gi in the alpha irreducible representations denoted by chi alpha gi, then. Uh, the character of gi in the representation gamma can be written as a linear combination of them. So you multiply it with some number a alpha, then summation over alpha over all possible reducible representations. So alpha running from 1 to r, where r is the number of inequivalent irreducible representations of the group g. So that is this statement. Now, uh, the coefficient of chi alpha in this expansion, which is denoted by A alpha, uh, is given by this equation. So, you have summation over gi, then the form plus conjugate of chi alpha gi times chi of gi. So, you have the element gi and its character in the representation gamma multiplied by the complex conjugate of the character of gi in the alpha irreducible representation and then take the sum over all elements gi then divide it by small letter g which is the order of the group g. So that will give this coefficient a alpha appearing in this weighted sum giving the character uh, of gi in the representation gamma. We now proceed to uh, prove this. If gamma is a completely reducible representation, then we will be able to write it as a direct sum of various irreducible represent representations. That is, gamma can be written as uh, the first irreducible representation gamma 1 times a1 plus uh, a2 times gamma 2 and so on up to a r times gamma r. The meaning of this is that the representation matrix gamma will be given by uh, say maybe first block uh, given by a block diagonal matrix in which the first block correspond to say gamma 1 and this will appear. So the block gamma 1 will appear a1 times. For example, if a1 is 2 then we may write it as uh, first the block gamma 1 and gamma 1 again gets repeated and then gamma 2 as repeated as many times as uh, a2 and so on up to uh, gamma r and the off diagonal blocks all will be 0. So this is what, so in this case this representation is simply 2 times gamma 1 direct sum with gamma 2. Because here I have only considered gamma which contains gamma 1 2 times and gamma 2 1 times. So in general, uh, if gamma is a completely reducible representation by means of a similarity transformation, we can uh, reduce all the representation matrices gamma, that is gamma corresponding to every element of the group into this form, block diagonal form where uh, 
the irreducible representation gamma i appears a i times for i running from 1 to r. Now, obviously, the character of an element in uh, the representation gamma is given by trace of uh, the representation matrix gamma gi. But any gamma gi will have a form like this. And the trace of uh, the matrix gamma will be some of the diagonal elements of uh, this matrix. But as you can see from this structure, this will be equal to sum of the diagonal elements of the first block plus sum of the diagonal elements of the second block plus sum of the diagonal elements of the third block. So this is equal to, so now uh, in this case we have gamma 1 appearing two times and therefore uh, the sum of the diagonal elements of uh, gamma 1 appears two times. By the way, sum of the diagonal elements of gamma 1 is simply the trace of gamma 1, which is the character of the element gi in the, in the first irreducible representation gamma 1. So, if I take trace of gamma, this will be simply trace of lambda 1, oh sorry, gamma 1 plus trace of gamma 1 plus trace of gamma 2. So, that is 2 times trace of gamma 1 plus trace of gamma 2. So, in general, if the decomposition is like this, then trace of gamma will be A1 times trace of gamma 1 plus A2 times trace of gamma 2, etc. up to AR times trace of gamma R. So, that is what we have written here in this equation. Uh, character of GI is equal to trace of gamma GI is equal to sum over alpha running from 1 to R A alpha trace of gamma alpha GI. Now, trace of gamma alpha gi is nothing but uh, the character in the alpha irreducible representation of the element gi. Therefore, chi i is equal to sum over alpha running from 1 to r, then this a alpha times chi alpha of gi. So, now we need to find an expression for a alpha here. For that, we first multiply chi g i with say some uh, chi beta g i star. So, that is exactly what we have done here. We take the formless conjugate of chi beta g i and multiply this chi g i with that and then take summation over g i over all elements of the group. So, when we do that, we have to substitute for chi g i with this form and then there will be two sums, sum over g i and sum over alpha and I will take sum over g i first and then sum over alpha. So, sum over alpha can be written to the left. So, when I do that, sum over alpha running from 1 to r, then this a alpha, then sum over g i and this quantity that is the complex conjugate of chi beta g i times this factor that is chi alpha g i. But from the orthogonality theorem of the characters of uh, a group, we could immediately see that this quantity, this sum is equal to g times delta alpha beta where g is the order of the group capital G. So then this sum becomes sum over alpha running from 1 to r, then this a alpha and g times delta alpha beta. Summation is simple because we have a Kronecker delta here. So after the sum, we will have a alpha replaced by beta in this a alpha. So the result is a beta times g. Or in other words, a beta is equal to 1 by g times this quantity which is sum over g i over g then the complex conjugate of chi beta g i times chi g i and this is exactly what is claimed here in the second part of this proposition. So, instead of beta I have alpha here. So, a alpha is equal to 1 by g sum over g i the complex conjugate of chi alpha g i times 
a of t i. Now, in this sum, uh, we have summation over all group elements, but as we have seen already, the character uh, of all elements in a class are the same, and therefore we don't have to, uh, you know, take summation over all uh, different elements of the group. Instead, we can write it as a sum over different classes of the group. If there are k, sorry, n k elements in the kth class, then this summation can be written as 1 by g times sum over k running from 1 to c, where c is the number of classes of the group. Then this quantity becomes n k times chi k alpha star times chi k, where chi k is simply the character of the kth class of the group, which is equal to the character of any of the elements in that class. So this can equivalently written uh, by this equation as well as a sum over different classes. Now further, uh, from uh, this way of writing gamma as a direct sum of the irreducible representations, we can see that the number of rows in gamma is the same as some, the number of rows of gamma 1 plus number of uh, uh, rows of gamma 1 again plus number of rows of gamma 2. And similarly, the number of columns of gamma is also the sum of the number of columns of each of these blocks, diagonal blocks. And therefore, uh, the number of rows or columns of gamma is simply the number of uh, rows or columns of each of the diagonal block and which will be a1 times, so if, if the decomposition is something like this, that will be a1 times the number of rows of gamma 1 plus a2 times number of rows of gamma 2 and so on up to a r times number of rows of gamma r. So which I can write in the following way. The number of rows of that representation or number of columns of the representation matrix is what the dimension of the representation is. So dimension of gamma is equal to the dimension of this direct sum which is nothing but summation over alpha running from 1 to r a alpha times dimension of gamma alpha but dimension of gamma alpha is denoted by this symbol in this formula l alpha so we have if uh, if we have an irreduce sorry reducible representation completely reducible representation gamma which can be given as direct sum of a1 gamma 1 direct sum plus etc plus a r gamma r then dimension of gamma is equal to a1 times dimension of gamma 1 plus a2 times dimension of gamma 2 etc plus a r times dimension of gamma r but dimension of gamma 1 is written as l1 and dimension of gamma r is written as l r and it can be simply written as sum over alpha running from 1 to n 1 to r a alpha l alpha we now discuss a criterion for irreducibility of a representation so the proposition is the following the character chi of a representation gamma of a finite group g of order g always satisfy the following condition. So, if I take the character of an element g i and take its mode square and sum over all elements of this quantity, uh, sum over all elements of the group of this quantity and divide it by g, I will get an integer, a positive integer m. So that means 1 by g times sum over g i over uh, all elements of the group G of uh, mode square of chi G i, where chi G i is the character of G i in the representation gamma. So then this quantity will be equal to a positive integer m. Now if m is equal to 1, then gamma, the, the representation gamma is irreducible. And 
if gamma is reducible then m will be strictly greater than 1. So, we now prove uh, this proposition. Consider uh, a representation gamma and suppose it has a decomposition in terms of uh, the irreducible representation. Since it is completely reducible, it will always have uh, a decomposition given by gamma equal to uh, a1 gamma 1 then direct sum so on then a r so if i take the trace of this i will get trace of gamma is equal to uh, say sum over k running from or maybe sum over alpha running from 1 to r of a alpha then trace of gamma alpha now trace of gamma alpha is nothing but chi alpha so that is exactly what i have here so chi of gi the character of an element gi in this representation gamma which is trace of gamma of gi is simply sum over alpha running from 1 to r and a alpha then Price of gamma alpha of g i which is nothing but chi alpha g i. Now I can compute this quantity that is mentioned in the proposition that is take the mod square of chi g i square and take the sum over g i over all elements of the group g and divide it by g. So if I do that uh, so, this is equal to 1 by g sum over g i 1 plus conjugate of chi g i times chi g i. Then I can substitute for chi g i with this formula. So, uh, so, that will be given by this quantity can be written as sum over alpha then a alpha star and uh, that is because Uh, chi g i is given by this formula. So, chi alpha star then chi alpha g i star. And this chi can be written with a different <coughs> summation index instead of alpha I will write uh, beta, beta again running from 1 to r. By the way this alpha runs from 1 to r. Then a beta chi beta chi. So, when I do that, I will get this equation. <laughs> now, I will take summation over g i first and take it to this form. So, I have 1 by g summation over alpha, then summation over beta, then this a star alpha and this is a beta. By the way, uh, these factors a alpha, a beta, etc. are numbers, integers and they are non-negative integers. It could either be 0 or a positive integer because it represents the number of times a particular irreducible representation appears in gamma when we completely reduce it. So, if gamma can be written as uh, a direct sum like this, so a a r or a k or a alpha represents the number of times uh, the irreducible representation gamma alpha appears here. So, it is a, a non-negative integer and therefore, um, you know, I could uh, write a alpha star as simply a alpha. But let me keep it here for the time being. So now I can take 1 by g summation over alpha and summation over beta then this a alpha star and a beta then summation over g i over the group of this quantity times this quantity. But we have already seen from the orthogonality of characters that this summation is equal to g times delta alpha beta. 
Now this Kronecker delta, uh, so uh, when we write G delta alpha beta for this, this G gets cancelled with this G. Okay, so this and this gets cancelled and we uh, and we have the sum given by this equation. We have a Kronecker delta sitting here and the summation over beta can be done using this Kronecker delta. So you have to replace this beta by alpha. And the result is summation over alpha running from 1 to R a alpha star times a alpha which is mod square of a alpha anyway i can i could have written this simply as a alpha square because a alpha a beta etc are non negative integers real numbers since this is a sum of integers squares of integers so this sum should also be an integer so this is our first claim that 1 by g sum over g i chi g i mod square is equal to a positive integer and the reason is uh, at least one of this a alpha should be non-zero because gamma is a representation and at least one of irreducible representation should appear there so that means the summation should be greater than zero so m is a positive integer value and suppose gamma was irreducible so when we use a similarity transformation uh, we can transform it to one of the irreducible representations we cannot reduce it we cannot block diagonalize it anymore because it is irreducible but uh, by a similarity transformation we can uh, transform into the form of uh, one of the non irreducible representation so that means of all a alpha one of them will be one and all others will be zero because gamma is written as a1 gamma1 direct sum etc plus a r gamma r if it is irreducible it should be one of gamma1 gamma2 etc up to gamma r even if that is repeated you know we will have say this a1 greater than 1 so then in that case uh, the representation gamma is reducible so if it is reducible one of the irreducible sorry if it is irreducible one of the irreducible representations appears once and only once here and therefore one of the a alpha will be 1 and all others will be 0 so in this sum we will get for one term a alpha equal to 1, its, its square is 1 and therefore the sum will be 1 because all other terms will be 0. So that means uh, if m is equal to 1, then sorry, if the representation is irreducible, then m is definitely 1. And if the representation is irreducible, then we can be sure that there will be at least uh, two blocks when we reduce it. Two uh, diagonal blocks when we reduce it so that means at least two uh, yeah so either a1 could be uh, sorry a alpha for one of them could be greater than one or more than one a alpha may be uh, non zero and obviously the, since there will be either a alpha one of the a alphas could be greater than one or more than one a alpha could be uh, non zero in in these two cases uh, obviously the summation will be greater than one so if gamma is reducible then m will be greater than one as before uh, the summation that we have written here is over the group elements now the character depends only on the class and therefore now the condition for uh, irreducibility of a representation can be written in terms of summation over the classes so instead of this i could write this in the following way sum over g instead of taking summation sorry 1 by g times sum over instead of taking sum over g i i can take sum over the classes so k running from 1 to c then 
uh, if there are nk elements in the kth class so this chi gi corresponding to uh, you know gi correspond to the kth class there will be k such nk such elements and each of them contribute the same uh, character chi k and so i will have nk times chi k square so this sum can be written this way and that should be equal to 1 if the representation gamma is irreducible so the condition of uh, irreducibility can be written as 1 by g times summation over k running from 1 to c nk the mod square of chi k which is chi k star times chi k that should be equal to 1. So we now consider what is called the regular representation of a finite group. And the regular representation is a g dimensional representation of the group, first of all, where g is the order of the group. And the, for any group element gk, the ijth element of the representation matrix, which we denote as uh, gamma r, r e g right, for regular uh, ij of gk is written as defined as 1 if g i g k is equal to g j and it is equal to uh, 0 if g i g k is not equal to so we can label the group elements as g1 g2 g3 etc up to g g and then uh, we can define uh, g by g square matrices and the representation matrix for gk is such that the ijth element of the representation matrix of gk is equal to 1 if gi times gk is equal to gj and is 0 if it is not. So, there is an easier way of constructing this which is obtained in the following way. Once we got the group and its multiplication table, construct or re rewrite the multiplication table in the following way. So as column labels, we write G1, G2, etc. up to GG. Now the row label uh, corresponding to the first row will be g1 inverse and the row label corresponding to the second row will be g2 inverse and so on so that the ijth element sorry uh, yeah so the ith element the diagonal element of the multiplication table will contain gi inverse times gi which is nothing but the identity element So we have already discussed arranging uh, the row and column labels in this way while we were discussing the multiple uh, uh, multiplication table in one of our earlier class. So the way to arrange the multiplication table is the following. We have <laughs> the column labels given by G1, G2, G3, etc. to GG. Then for the first row, remember the first column correspond to the element G1. So the row label for the first row, first row is the inverse of that element, G1 inverse. And row label for the second row is G2 inverse because the second column corresponds to element G2. So that the II cell will have a row label corresponding to GI inverse and column label corresponding to GI. And the i itself will be simply the product of these two, which is nothing but E. So now, once we construct the multiplication table in this way, uh, 
the regular representation for an element gk is obtained in the following way in the multiplication table where uh, if a particular cell contains the element gk then replace that cell with one if it does not contain gk then replace that cell with zero so that means a cell suppose the ij cell ij cell will be zero if that cell do not contain gk but anyway the ij cell will have a value equal to because the row index is i the corresponding element is gi inverse since the column index is j the corresponding element is gj so ij cell if it contains gk then that cell will be equal to 1 so the ij cell is also equal to gi inverse times gj and this has to be equal to gk if that particular cell is to be 1 in the regular representation of gk or in other words this implies that if ij cell is 1 that means gi gk is equal to gj because we multiply this equation this condition from the left with gi so the left we will get gi gi inverse which is identity identity times gj is gj and on the right we will get gj times gk so the gi times gk and that's exactly what this condition is so that means the ij cell which is gamma ij regular of gk is equal to 1 if gi gk is equal to gj and 0 otherwise because in that case that cell will not contain the element gk but this is exactly what this definition is so the regular representation can also be obtained in this way where we have uh, the column labels uh, uh, given by g1 g2 g3 etc the first column correspond to element g1 second corresponding to uh, element g2 and so on and the row columns given by the corresponding inverse elements that is the first row correspond to g1 inverse second row to g2 inverse and so on and then uh, the matrix corresponding to the regular representation of the gk element is obtained from this multiplication table by replacing a cell by 1 if that cell contains gk and 0 if it contains uh, any other element than gk which is exactly what we have given by this expression so this definition can also be written symbolically this way where we have used the symbol delta and delta g i g k comma g j exactly means this so this is actually a Kronecker delta for these labels g i j k equal to g j in that case this will be 1 if g i g k is not equal to g j then this is equal to 0 we now have to show that uh, uh, defining matrices in this way uh, correspond to a representation of the group only then can we call these matrices as the representation matrices of the group first of all we have to show that they are uh, non-singular to see this we know that uh, a matrix corresponding to uh, the gamma gk is obtained by replacing the multiplication table the cells in the multiplication table in such a way that if that if a particular cell contains gk then it is replaced by one and zero otherwise now from the rearrangement theorem we know that every row contains uh, any particular element of the group once and only once so every row contains gk once and every column similarly contains gk once so if we consider different rows of the representation matrix 
then every row will contain one only once and all other cells in that row will be zero and the position of the one in the set in a different row will be different and therefore those rows will be linearly independent so the different rows in the representation matrices will be linearly independent and therefore the determinant of the representation matrices defined this way will be non zero therefore these matrices will be non singular now the second property that is to be satisfied these matrices for that they can be uh, considered as representation of the group is that they preserve the group multiplication so to see this we first construct the product of two representation matrices corresponding to elements gk and gl so gamma regular of gk times gamma regular of gl is equal to and the ijth element of that product uh, can be written as the summation over p of the ipth element of the first matrix and the pjth element of the second matrix and that's exactly what we have written here gamma ipgk and gamma pjgl but from our definition of uh, the regular representation this is nothing but we go back here gamma i j g k is nothing but delta of g i g k comma g j so in this case this would be nothing but uh, the kronecker delta g i g k comma g p and similarly this one will be delta g p g l comma g j and that is what we have written here this line so this direct delta, uh, kronecker delta function is non zero when gi gk is equal to gp so if i take a summation over p only when uh, gp is equal to gi times gk is this non zero in that case this will be one so when I take a summation over this, I only need to consider uh, one value of P where GP is equal to GI, GK and that value can be substituted here. So this is equal to delta and instead of GP, I can write GI, GK. Then I have GL here, so GL and GJ. So if GK, GL is an element, then delta g i g k g l comma g j means this is simply uh, the regular representation matrix the ijth element of the regular representation matrix of g k g l because this is nothing but Kronecker delta g i then this guy g k g l comma g j and that's exactly what we have here on the left hand side so what we have shown here is that the ijth element of uh, gamma gk times gamma gl is simply the ijth element of gamma gk gl for all i and j that means this matrix the product of these two matrices is simply equal to this matrix so gamma gk times gamma gl is equal to gamma of gk gl so it preserves the group multiplication and therefore uh, these matrices gamma regular forms a representation of G and the dimension of this representation is the same as the number of columns and rows in this in these matrices since there are G group elements there will be G rows because they correspond to the group multiplication table and therefore the dimension of regular representation is G G so now we consider uh, a couple of examples of constructing uh, these represent regular representation matrices. So consider the group C4V, the symmetry group of the square. 
and we have already seen that the elements are given by E, then the rotation C4, C4 square, C4 cube, then the uh, reflections Mx, My, and sigma U, sigma V. And the group multiplication table is given by this. It is arranged in such a way that the first row correspond to the inverse of the element labeling first column E. E inverse is E obviously. Now the second column is labeled by C4 and the corresponding row index is C4 cube because C4 to the power 4 is 1. So the inverse of C4 is C4 cube and so on. So that all diagonal elements would be the identity element. So this is one thing that we know. In the regular representation, the identity element occupies the diagonal cells. And if we, if we are to construct uh, the representation of the diagonal, uh, the identity element, that is gamma regular of E, we should replace in this multiplication table every cell that contains E by 1 and all other cells by 0. So here, if we, if we construct the regular representation matrix of uh, the identity element, we have to replace every uh, diagonal cell by, by 1. And all other elements will be 0 and that is because every uh, row contains an element once and only once and similarly every column contains an element once and only once. So E is already occupying the diagonal cells and therefore in that row or in that column it cannot occupy anywhere else and therefore uh, the regular representation matrix of the identity is simply the identity matrix of order G. We can uh, note one more thing and for any other element other than the identity, that element will never appear in the diagonal cells, any of the diagonal cells because that is occupied by the identity element and no other uh, element occupy the diagonal cell. So the diagonal entries in the in the regular representation matrices of any element other than identity will be zero. So if we construct the character of the regular representation, character in the uh, uh, regular representation of any element other than the identity element, we have to take the trace of the corresponding representation matrix. But the representation matrix does not have uh, non-zero entries in the diagonal cells. And therefore, if we take the trace, it will be zero. So that means trace of gamma regular representation matrix of any element gi is equal to zero if gi is not equal to the identity element. However, if GI is the identity element, this representation matrix is the identity matrix of order G and the trace of representation matrix of order, uh, sorry, uh, identity matrix of order G is simply G. So this is zero if GI is equal to G, if GI is not equal to G, not equal to E and it is equal to G if E i is equal to E, the identity matrix. So we may write it in the following way, trace of gamma regular E i is equal to 0 if E i is not equal to the identity and G if E i is equal to E. So this is equal to G times delta E i comma E. So when G i is equal to E, this will be G and 0 otherwise. But what is this trace? This is the character of G i in the regular representation, which we denote as chi regular of G i. 
So we have an important property of the regular representation that the character of an element in the regular representation is equal to G if that element is identity and zero otherwise. So the only element with non-zero character in the regular representation is the identity. So now let us uh, construct the, the regular representation of the element mx. So we have to go to this multiplication table and find the entries where we have mx. So mx appears here, mx appears here, then mx appears here, 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 here. And all these cells will be replaced by 1 and all other cells by 0. And that will give the regular representation matrix for Mx. And that's exactly what I got here. As you can see, uh, this fifth uh, column in the first row, so that is 1, and all other entries are 0. And in the other one, uh, the seventh one is 1, and all other 0. The other one in the in the third row the third one is one and all others are zero and so on in a similar fashion we can construct the regular representation matrix for c4 by <coughs> identifying all cells that contain c4 and making them one so here this one is c4 and therefore the corresponding entry will be one here in the regular representation of c4 Characters of the regular representation. As I have already mentioned, the character of an element gi in the regular representation is simply given by g times delta gi comma e. So that is, this is equal to g if gi is identity and is zero otherwise. We now consider reduction of the regular representation. So, first of all, to check whether it is reducible, we can construct this quantity, the check that we have identified earlier and see whether this is equal to 1 or not. If it is 1, it will be irreducible and if it is greater than 1, it will be reducible. So, to consider this, we note that 1 by g times sum over g chi regular gi mod square. And as we already know, chi regular gi is nothing but g times delta gi comma e. So only when gi is equal to e is this non-zero. So in this sum, we only have to re retain one term, which is the one corresponding to gi being equal to e. In that case, this is g square. So I have 1 by g times g square, which is simply g. Now, G is the order of the group and which unless it is uh, uh, the group containing only one element that is the group given by the identity element only, G is greater than 1 and in that case the uh, regular representation is reducible. So, the next step is in finding uh, how it is represented when we reduce it. So we should be able to write it uh, as a direct sum of the irreducible representations in this following way. So gamma regular will be equal to a1 gamma1 plus direct sum uh, a2 gamma2 direct sum and so on up to ar gamma r. And this coefficients a alpha can be constructed using the formula that computed using the formula a alpha equal to 1 by g then sum over g i chi alpha g i star times uh, chi g i and here chi is chi regular the character corresponding to the regular representation but it is uh, simple the result is simple for chi regular g i which is nothing but g times delta g i e so that means only when gi is equal to e is this non-zero. So in this sum, I can restrict myself to the case where gi is equal to e. So the result would be 1 by g 
times chi alpha of e star then g and this g gets cancelled with that g and this will be simply the complex conjugate of chi alpha e but we already know that the representation matrix for the identity in any representation is simply uh, the unit matrix uh, corresponding to that particular dimension the dimension of the representation so uh, in the alpha irreducible representation the representation matrix for the identity element will be the identity matrix of the same order as the dimension of the representation uh, if alpha irreducible representation has dimension l alpha then the representation matrix for identity would be identity matrix of order l alpha and then the trace of that matrix would be simply trace of this identity matrix which is simply l alpha or in other words chi alpha of e in the alpha to reducible representation is l alpha l alpha is a, an integer so its complex conjugate is that integer so we see that a alpha is equal to l alpha so in the complete reduction of the regular representation the number of times the alpha the reducible representation appears is simply l alpha the dimension of that representation then the reduction of the regular representation may be written as follows instead of a alpha i can write l alpha so gamma regular is equal to l1 times gamma 1 directs up uh, l2 times gamma 2 and so on up to lr times gamma r now we have the result that the dimension of uh, this gamma uh, this representation matrix gamma regular on the left hand side is simply equal to sum over alpha running from 1 to r and since this gamma 1 matrix uh, appears l1 times we will have l1 times the dimension of gamma 1 which is again l1 so for the alpha reducible representation this would be l alpha times l alpha which is l alpha square now the dimension of the regular representation is g and therefore the left hand side is g and the right hand side is sum over alpha running from 1 to r l alpha square so we got an additional identity remember earlier uh, from the geometric interpretation of the orthogonality relationship for the uh, representation matrices we were able to show that sum over alpha running from 1 to r l alpha square was less than or equal to g so now we can show using the regular representation that in fact the equality holds here so sum over alpha running from 1 to r l alpha square is equal to g now we consider construction of character tables and the irreducible representations So a character table is a tabular arrangement of characters of the classes of the group with uh, the each column representing uh, characters of a given class. So this particular column for example in this character uh, table uh, for C4V the group C4V the first column correspond to class C1 the second column correspond to class C2 and so on. And the rows correspond to the irreducible representations. Okay. And this is because of the following. Suppose we have an irreducible representation gamma alpha. 
and a class CK. Then, uh, if I construct the character of any element in the class CK in the alpha to reducible representation, they will all be the same. So, if I write uh, the characters of various elements in the group in a particular irreducible representation, say alpha to reducible representation, uh, they can be arranged with these two labels, where alpha corresponding to the irreducible representation and k corresponding to the class to which the particular element belongs. To represent this in a tabular form, we, we can, uh, you know, the rows can be used to represent the irreducible representation or label. The rows can be labeled by the irreducible representations alpha and the columns can be labeled by the irreducible, the class index k. And that is exactly what we have done here. So, in the case of C4V, we, we knew or we know already that there are five classes and the class 1 correspond to this, class 2 correspond to that and so on. So, each column correspond to one class. We have also shown that the number of irreducible representations is equal to number of classes. So, the number of columns is equal to number of classes and the number of rows is equal to the number of irreducible representations which is also equal to the number of classes. So, in this case, there are five classes and therefore there will be five irreducible representations. So, the character table is also a square uh, table. There will be, uh, you know, as many uh, columns as as many rows. And each cell corresponds to the value chi alpha k, where k is the column index and alpha is the row index corresponding to the irreducible representation. K is a column index corresponding to the character, uh, sorry, the class. So, we now discuss a general algorithm to construct the character table. First of all, we need to find the number of classes in the group and then the number of irreducible representations R is equal to the number of classes C. So, the character table is a table of order C by C. Now, uh, we have this equality that we just proved that sum over alpha running from 1 to R, L alpha square is equal to G and that we can use over here. Now, with R is equal to C, that means sum over alpha running from 1 to C, L alpha square is equal to G. Now, L alpha is an integer. It is the dimension of the alpha to reducible representation. So, this is the sum of squares of integers, C integers, and that should be equal to G, the order of the group. And uh, from this equation, we should identify the possible set of values of L alpha. So, that gives us the dimensions of irreducible representations of the group. Now, in the third step, we note that every group has a one-dimensional representation whereby each element is mapped to one and this representation is called the identity representation. So, each element, the representation matrix for each element is one, which is a one by one matrix and therefore its trace is also one. Therefore, the character of every element in the identity representation is one. By the way, identity representation is also irreducible because there is, it is already one dimensional. That is, so it is irreducible. So, the first irreducible representation that we know for every group is the identity representation and the character of each element in that representation is one. So, if we take uh, the first row to correspond to the identity representation in the character table, uh, the first row is identically 1 and that is exactly what we got here. This chi 1 corresponds to the identity representation and every element 
is represented by 1 and the character of every element is also 1. So, for each class, the character is 1. The next thing is uh, considering the class corresponding to the identity element. As we have already seen, the identity is in a class of its own. So, it is a class with only one element. So, we will take the first column to correspond to the identity, the class containing identity element only. And then, we note that the identity element is represented by um, an identity matrix in any representation. So, in the alpha to reducible representation, it is represented by an identity matrix of dimension L alpha, of order L alpha, where L alpha is the dimension of that representation. And the trace of the representation matrix, and that is the character of identity element in that representation, will be L alpha. So, we can also find the entries in corresponding to the uh, first column, which we take to be the one corresponding to the class to which identity belongs. And that entries are also known because that is given by L alpha. And that's what we have done here. We will explain this in detail uh, in the next section. Now, we uh, look for various one-dimensional representations of the irreducible, uh, various one-dimensional irreducible representations of, of the group. And in one-dimensional representations, the representation matrix is a number. And therefore, character is also that same number. Now, the representation matrices has to satisfy the group multiplication rules. Therefore, in one dimensional representations, the characters which are those numbers themselves, the representation matrices themselves, has to satisfy the group multiplication rules. Suppose we have an element of order n, then gi to the power n is the identity element. Now, if it is a one-dimensional representation, the corresponding matrix will be 1. So, identity element and the corresponding matrix would be uh, gamma E would be 1 in a one-dimensional representation. So, that means gamma G to the power N should be equal to gamma E. And that should be equal to 1. But this gamma g is simply a number. And that is also equal to the character because it is one dimension. Therefore, psi gi to the power n should be equal to 1. Or in other words, the character of an element in a one dimensional representation should be equal to the nth root, one of the nth roots of identity if it is of order n. So, this is equal to nth root of uh, 1, which can be written as e to the power i2 by m by n, where m and m is an integer. So, we then for the distinct values, we can take m to run from 0 to n minus 1. So, if we can identify the order of each element, then in one dimensional representation, the character of those elements should be given by uh, the nth roots of 1. Then, the rows corresponding to one dimensional irreducible representations are work, can be worked out using uh, this relationship and the orthogonality relations that we did uh, we discussed earlier. So that was sum over uh, k 
running from 1 to C, chi alpha k star chi beta k times nk is equal to g times delta alpha beta. So, this relationship can also be used along with this to find out uh, the elements of the, the remaining elements of uh, rows corresponding to one dimensional represent irreducible representations. Now, the characters of higher dimensional representations are worked out using uh, this orthogonality that we just mentioned and the second orthogonality that corresponds to equation 1.65 and an additional relation that we discussed earlier. Those relations are going backwards back to those relationships. So the second orthogonality that we were discussing was this one. Sum over alpha running from 1 to R, chi p alpha star chi q alpha is equal to g by n p delta p q. And the other relation which says that n i n j chi i alpha chi j alpha equal to l alpha times sum over k running from 1 to c a i j k n k chi k alpha. So we can use these three relations. First orthogonality theorem for uh, characters, the second one, and this relationship together with the already known uh, values of the other cells corresponding to one dimensional representations, uh, one dimensional irreducible representations to work out uh, the characters of other representations. Now we use this algorithm to construct the character table for C4B. First of all, we have to identify the number of classes that is the first step in the algorithm that we just mentioned. So group is given by E, C4, C4 square, C4 cube, Mx, My, Sigma U and Sigma B. There are eight elements and therefore G is equal to eight. Now the classes of the group we have already identified to be C1 equal to E, C2 equal to C4 and C4 cube, C3 equal to C4 square, C4 is equal to Mx, My and C5 is equal to Sigma U, Sigma V. So there are five classes that means C is equal to five. The number of irreducible representations R is also equal to C, therefore equal to 5. So the character table is order 5 by 5. Then we have this equation, sum over alpha running from 1 to C, L alpha square is equal to G. Substituting for value of G and C here, we have L1 square plus L2 square plus L3 square plus L4 square plus L5 square is equal to 8. And we have to solve for L1, L2, L3, L4 and L5 which are all uh, positive integers that satisfy this condition. So it can be solved by the following choice. L1 equal to L2 equal to L3 equal to L4 is 1 and L5 equal to 2 or any permutations of that. So the choice that we are going to uh, use is this one. The first four irreducible representations will have dimension 1 and the fifth one will have dimension 2. The next step is uh, finding the first row of the character table. As we have already seen that correspond to the identity representation. In the identity representation, uh, all elements are represented by uh, number 1 and therefore the characters will all be 1. So the first row is identically 1. So the next step in the algorithm was finding uh, the first column 
that correspond to the class containing the identity. As we have already said, the first column is given by L alpha. So we already have L1 equal to L2 equal to L3 equal to L4 equal to 1 and therefore the first four elements in that column is 4. Now L5 is equal to 2 and therefore this is equal to 2. So the remaining, there are, th uh, there are three uh, remaining one dimensional representations and we have to find the characters for them first. Okay, to do that, what we do is the following. Uh, first of all, we know that C2, class C2 has one element, uh, sorry, two elements, C4 and C4 cube. And C4 cube, C4 satisfies the following condition, C4 to the power 4 is equal to 1. So the order of this element is 4. So the character of C4 uh, or C4 cube and we may write it as chi2 because it belongs to the class C2. Chi2 will be uh, the fourth root of 1. So which could either be plus or minus 1 or plus or minus i. Okay. So now we look at class C3 and the character will be represented by chi3. But the element involved is c4 square and c4 square to the power 2 is identity. That's because this would be c4 to the power 4 which is identity. So that means c4 square has order 2 and therefore chi 3 should be square root of 1. So that will be plus or minus 1. So chi 3 should be plus or minus 1. Again we look at C4. C4 contains mx and my. Both are of order 2 because mx square is identity, my square is identity. And therefore chi 4 should be square root of 1. So that is going to be plus or minus 1. Similarly uh, look at C5. Sigma u and sigma v are of order 2 and therefore their character should also be uh, square root of 1. So that is plus or minus 1. Okay. So the next step is noting that mx times my is equal to c4 square and which can be seen from the group multiplication table that we have seen here. mx and my. So that correspond to this cell mx times my. That is equal to c4 square. So as I have told you earlier, uh, the characters of one dimensional representation should satisfy the multiplication rule. So mx times my should be c4 square. That means if I take the character of mx and multiply it with character of my, I should get character of c4 square. Okay, but mx and my belong to the same class. It belongs to c4 and therefore their characters are the same. So that means this is chi4 and this is chi4. So character of c4 square is equal to chi 4 square but as we have already seen chi 4 is plus or minus 1 and therefore chi 4 square is 1 or in other words uh, the character of c 4 square which is actually chi 3 so chi 3 should be equal to 1 so out of this choice the two choices that we had over here plus or minus 1 because of this relationship, we can fix <coughs> chi 3 to be equal to 1. So we have uh, the following choices, chi 4 equal to plus or minus 1, chi 5 equal to plus or minus 1 and chi 3, even though we had the choice that it could be plus or minus 1, because of this relation, we see that it can only be plus 1. Okay. So, now remove 
the unwanted choices and we will write as chi 3 equal to 1 then chi 4 equal to plus or minus 1 and chi 5 equal to plus or minus 1 and chi 2 can be plus or minus 1 or plus or minus i but now look at the following chi 3 equal to by the way c4 square is equal to c4 times c4 again since it is a one dimensional representation this would mean that chi of c4 square is equal to chi of c4 into chi of c4 but chi of c4 is simply chi 2 because it belongs to class 2 so this is equal to chi 2 square and on the left hand side i have chi of c4 square which is chi 3 because c4 square is in class c3 but chi 3 is equal to 1 so that means chi 2 square is equal to plus 1 so chi 2 can only be plus or minus 1 so i don't have to think about this plus or minus i possibility so now we can see that chi 2 is plus or minus 1 chi 3 is 1 chi 4 and chi 5 also plus or minus 1. So that is the choice that we have. So now in the in the character table we see that chi 3 is equal to 1 for all these one dimensional representations. So we need uh, it remains to be found out that the cells that needs to be found out are these cells and also the row corresponding to the two-dimensional representation. We can use the orthogonality theorem to find that. Okay. So, the orthogonality theorem would say that sum over k running from 1 to c, in this case 1 to 5, then n k then chi k alpha star times chi k beta should be equal to g delta alpha now we chose alpha to be 1 and beta to be equal to 1 of 2 3 or 4 so you replace this by 1 okay so then beta is 2 3 or 4 in that case delta alpha beta will be 0 so the right hand side will simply be 0 now we know that chi 1 star is simply 1 because chi k 1 is 1 identically we are considering the first row here and we also note that for class 1 n 1 is 1 for class 2, there are two elements, n2 is 2, chi 3, n1 is 1. For n4, corresponding to class 4 is 2 and n5 is 2. So, using this formula, we have for k equal to 1, n1 is 1, chi, one, chi uh, 1, 1 is 1, so that is 1 and 1, then chi k beta and uh, that is also one because this corresponds to the first column that we already knew the first column here and the third column here we already knew the values we, only columns that we don't know about are uh, column two four and five okay now look at k equal to two n2 is two that is this then again chi 2 is 1 because chi 2 1 is 1 correspond to the first row then chi 2 beta that we don't know it could be plus or minus 1 that's all we know so I simply write as chi 2 beta plus k equal to 3 n 3 is 1 then chi 3 1 is 1 because of the first row and identically 1 and chi 3 beta chi 3 is for one dimensional representations 1 as we have seen because it corresponds to the third class which contains c4 square now for k 
equal to 4, we have n4 is equal to 2, then chi 4 1 is 1, then chi 4 beta, we don't know, we need to find that. Plus, for n is equal to k equal to 5, I have n5 is equal to 2, and this is equal to 1, and chi 5 beta unknown, and the right hand side is 0. So, Solving this, we get chi 2 beta plus chi 4 beta plus chi 5 beta equal to minus 1. This, uh, each of these numbers could be plus or minus 1. So that means <laughs> the solution for this is that two of them is minus 1, the other is plus 1. Now remember, we have uh, three reducible representations remaining, right? So corresponding to alpha equal to 2, 3, and 4. And there are Three ways of choosing, uh, you know, two of them being minus one and the other one plus one. And that is what we have done here. We have three ways of placing them because uh, for alpha equal to two, that is a second irreducible representation, we have chosen uh, this one, uh, that is chi five to be one, and the other two, this one and this two to be minus one. And in irreducible representation 3, we have chosen chi 4 to be plus 1 and the other 2 to be minus 1. And in the other irreducible representation, we have chosen chi 2 to be 1 and the other 2 to be minus 1. Okay. So, the next thing to be done is to find the characters for the uh, two-dimensional irreducible representation. For which we use uh, the <coughs> uh, orthogonality relationship given by this following equation that is sum over alpha running from 1 to r the number of irreducible representations which is the same as the number of classes in which case I in, in this case I can write it as 5 then Chi P uh, star alpha, then Chi Q alpha equal to G by N P delta P Q. And remember, in the character table, we know the first column. So the only uh, elements that we need to find now are corresponding to columns 2, 3, 4, and 5. So in this equation, I will choose P to be equal to 1 and Q to be uh, any of 2, 3, 4, or 5. In that case, I will have the Kronecker delta 1 and Q and since Q is not equal to 1 in any of these choices, I will have the right hand side equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, first we consider the case with Q is equal to 2. The summation is over alpha. Okay. So, consider the case with two, uh, Q is equal to 2 and uh, P is equal to 1. So, I have to find a sum chi k, uh, chi 1 star alpha, then chi 2 alpha sum over alpha and that should be equal to 0. So, chi 1 correspond to this column, chi 2 correspond to this column. The only thing that remains to be found out is this. So, when I take the summation from 1 to 5, I have to take chi 1 star alpha, that is uh, chi, uh, yeah, chi 1 star 1, alpha equal to 1. So, that is this. Multiply it with chi 2 alpha, so that is this, alpha equal to 1. So, 1 times 1, which is 1. Then, in the next uh, value of alpha, alpha equal to 2, this times this, so that is plus this minus 1, 1 times minus 1, 
then again plus let me not put plus there so this product is minus one and uh, when alpha equal to three we need to consider this product which is again minus one and when alpha equal to four we need to consider this product which is one and this one this value is unknown okay so in in the for alpha running from one to four uh, the sum is one minus one minus one one that is zero for this i don't know the value so let me call it as x so it is two times x so the first four terms will give me zero plus this product is two times x that is equal to zero which implies x is equal to zero and that's why this character is equal to zero here and in the next step i can consider q equal to three and p is equal to one so instead of this i will have this and i need to consider products like this and i will uh, get the final result this is equal to minus two and if i take instead of this if i take it to be four i will get this or five i get this so this is how we construct the character table of finite groups